Los Angeles, California, 1970. Edmonds, Oklahoma, 1986. Ridgeway, New Jersey, 1991. Royal Oak, Michigan, 1991. Two separate events in 1993. Galetta, California, 2006. Baker City, Oregon, 2006. San Francisco, California, 2017. And Columbus, Ohio, 2017. What are these? What are the things that I just read off to you? Well, it's going postal. Going postal in America. The term going postal comes from postal employees getting fed up on the job and after being either terminated, being passed over for, for a promotion, or some kind of perceived grievance, and going back to work after that grievance has come up, and taking you know, several guns or you know one you know, high power um, rifle or gun and going back and killing not only their supervisors, their fellow employees, but also killing innocent bystanders who may have been at the post office at that time. So between uh, 1970 and 19, 1997, in that 27 year time span, more than 40 postal employees were gunned down on the job by either a former or a, a current uh, postal employee. Between the years 1986 and 2011, the workplace shootings averaged about 12 people per year. Yes, you got that right. Postal employees were killing each other at the rate of 12 per year. Now here's a sad statistic to um, average it out to give you some kind of reference to it. There were a total of, there were more postal employees who were gunned down on the job by a former or current postal employee in the entire history and from 1970 to 19, uh, um, 2011, from 1970 to 2011, that time span, I mean, more more, more people died at a post office. The reference is, look, all these postal employees who were just doing their job were gunned down by a former or current employee at the post office. And he, hence uh, why, you know, in our vernacular today, we used uh, the term, you know, going postal. For any time someone is, you know, extremely outraged and uncontrollable with rage and anger. We use the term going postal, even when it's not about the post office. Now, back, going back to the schools, when it comes to school shootings, we, the, the, there has never been a prom king, a prom queen, a valedictorian, or anybody else who has been in, you know, highly involved in school activities such as that, who has gone back to the school and gunned down um, their fellow students. The ones who have been the main culprits of it, and I'm not I'm saying everyone, there have been a couple outliners, but the main culprits of school shootings have always been the, the student who was didn't fit into the cliques, who was pushed out to the outer edges, and then was made fun of, mocked, ridiculed, and was pushed farther out. And then a perceived grievance came up in their lives where either they weren't getting the support at home, or something else came up and they were pushed even farther out and then something else triggered that either another event where they saw that maybe school shootings was you know a way to re you know seek some revenge upon them and was moved out even farther on the outskirts so by the time that the school shooting happened they were so far disconnected from here to there from the actual um, caring you know of any human you know, life at all that you know what might as well kill them all, is how they felt. But when it came to postal uh, employees killing each other, what has the United States Post Office done in all these years since 1970 to combat on-the-job postal shootings? Well, in 2017, 
the United States Post Office, um, after all the years of school, I mean, all the years of shootings on the job by former and uh, current employees, they uh, decided that uh, they would uh, take a look at it and a one year um, you know, study of the entire um, event of going postal, they uh, were able to determine that if, if they did a couple of things, tweaked a little um, couple of policies, that it would be better. And I kid you not, I'm reading exactly from the report on this study. Okay, first thing that they decided to do is stop terminating employees on Monday through Thursday. They would terminate employees only on Fridays instead of uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. The reason why they, did, they determined that this would be better to terminate employees only on Fridays it was because it would give them the weekend as a cool down period. So they would be less likely to come back and gun down their former and current employees you know, or, you know, and bosses on Monday. So fire them on Friday. They come back, uh, they, they're less likely to come back on Monday to, um, you know, carry out uh, one of these uh, going postal events. Yeah, it took them, what, 40 years to figure that out? <coughs> Excuse me very much. Excuse me. Next thing that they determine is if an employee is within 10 years of retirement, that instead of terminating them and removing all their pension and everything else that, and their medical benefits that they have, the better thing would be to do is to push them into early retirement. It took them 40 years of on-the-job shootings for the United States Post Office to determine what every other employer out there knew. You know what? If we strip them of their pension and we fire them, you know, a year, five years, 10 years before they, they're, you know, and after 40 years on the job, we strip everything from them, they're likely to come back here and kill us all. So everybody else out there in the free world figured this one out long before. But it took the United States Post Office 40 years of on-the-job mass shootings and killing before they did it. And then, only then, after they, they, they did a study of the entire event of going postal. And the third thing that they found in their study that determined, you know, um, these new policies was if an employee has a history of blowing up and going off to never have it be a termination of one-on-one, -on -one. here's your boss, this is the person firing you, and here's the employee getting fired. No, now it's going to be two, three, or four people in the room who are terminating the one person. So this one person doesn't have just this one person to hate who comes back and kills 15 people to get to this one. They say, okay, wait, if we have four and we make sure that one of these other three besides the boss has some kind of degree or experience in psychology. It took them 40 years of on-the-job shootings and killings to come up with that. Leave it to the government to sit down and go, you know what? Maybe, just maybe, we shouldn't be real big dicks to these people who were about to fire after they've been on the job their entire working career. Leave it to the United States Post Office. Yay! So, 2017. We'll see if this actually uh, um, helps at all. Now, I don't know if it will. Uh, it's a very uh, high stressful um, work environment. And they're constantly under the pressure to, you know, keep on, you know, every year. If, if they do any better, they got to double that the next year. If they do any better, they got to double that. Their productivity, they cut the amount of employees to bare bones. And they, you know, got rid of everything that, you know, the United States Post Office basically used to mean. For, mean and they're forced by Congress to turn a profit. And you know what? The United States Post Office is one of the only government agencies that turns a profit. Yeah, believe it or not, the, uh, the United States Post Office is one of the only branches of the entire federal government that has ever turned a profit. And they must, even if they meek out just a couple of cents per letter or a penny a letter, 
that they may if that they transaction through and they make a profit on it they make a profit somehow and to put it in context when it comes to postal rates we have by far the second to dead last cheapest postal rates in the entire world there is no one in the world no one who who was able to send a first class letter from east coast to west coast of the united states that in that amount of distance for 22 cents or 29 cents try doing that in some other country you can't even get a, a letter mailed across town for under 50 cents or 50 rubles or whatever their currency is so thanks again for stopping by and checking out today's video don't forget to do all those youtube things like you know subscribe share this video comment down below and if you feel like you really enjoy this content and the, you know that i put out here on this channel in the description of the video every video that i do there is a link to my patreon channel which i truly believe is the only way to support the, the type of content that i make because as we've all seen and you can turn on any true crime channel here on youtube they are demonetizing us across the board because it's not advertiser friendly content so and i believe the only way i'm ever going to survive is i get more patreon supporters and i get patreon supporters who want to actually support this type of content and believe in the fact that i'm telling the truth and i'm showing you what the rest of the world is like without the hype the speculation and or out and out lies or stealing content from other people to make my content so again thank you again everyone you stay safe out there